Hello, my name is Reed, and I work at the Institute of Aquaculture at the University of Stirling, developing geospatial modeling techniques for freshwater catchments to support the assessment of clearing capacities in freshwater lake systems. So freshwater aquaculture is an increasingly important field with vast numbers of lakes and man-made reservoirs becoming viable for fish farming across Europe. These, these farms include the more familiar salmonid hatcheries and smolt facilities, but can also include grow farms for carp, eel, crayfish, and many other species. When you compare freshwater lakes to marine systems, water quality is especially important as there are lower rates of flushing and so these relatively smaller bodies of water can heat up, freeze, or become full of nutrients or heavy metals all too quickly. Phosphorus is generally recognized as the main limiting factor in European lakes. Too little of it, nothing can grow, while too much of it causes eutrophication. And this is the movement of the lake into a different trophic state due to al algae blooms feeding off the phosphorus and in turn oxygen-loving bacteria feeding off the dead algae. Fish, invertebrates, and plants are caught up in this cycle and often die from a lack of oxygen, a lack of lido from algal toxins. Biodiversity and biomass plummets, and the food web in the lake is often permanently changed. The EU Horizon 2020 Tapas project's aim is to develop a toolbox to support planning and regulation of aquaculture, which includes both marine and freshwater fish farming. And for freshwater farms, aquaculture models can be used to support decision makers by assessing site suitability or evaluating the potential impact of different production levels. Models allow us to answer these questions well before any cage enters the water, and without risking the entire ecosystem. The models I'm evaluating were, until recently, agriculture-based and focused on stream networks within catchment basins. But in the last two years, other geospatial models have been developed that attempt to model what happens in the lake due to changes in surrounding land, in the weather, or in fish farming itself. When considering what can enter a lake, point sources such as sewage treatment plants and mining discharge is much easier to model than non-point sources such as fertilizer being applied on farmland up above the waterline. However, the modeling of non-point sources is tremendously important for fish farming since land within a catchment is often used for agricultural activity and a sudden rainstorm can sweep tons of sediment into a lake within hours. The resulting spike of nutrients in the lake could trigger eutrophication if the lake already had high levels of phosphorus. Therefore, Effective modeling of both types of inputs used. If both types of inputs must be used when planning for development or expansion of any farming activity within a lake system, whether it be fish or conifers, to ensure that this ecosystem remains healthy. And that's what I'm working on as part of the Tapas project, using extensive data sets from fieldwork campaigns to develop improved modeling techniques and approaches that consider freshwater aquaculture from a whole catchment perspective, which complements the EU's commitment to using an ecosystem-based approach when making aquaculture decisions.